Hello and welcome to Provis Gaming and the next installment of Civilization V, Brave New World. It's been a while since I last recorded this game, but I have gotten a lot of requests for it in the meantime, and you know what? I do deliver, so we're going to be picking this up again. Uh, at the time that I will be uploading this series, and I will be pre-recording it all in advance, um, I am either just about to leave for my wedding, or I am currently on my honeymoon. Either way, this is a very convenient way of giving you guys the content you've been asking for, while uh, simultaneously I can be off on my vacation enjoying my nuptials. So, who are we going to be playing for this series? Well, I got a lot of requests for it. Uh, Celts, England, India, the Netherlands, and so on. But I think today we're going to be playing as Austria. Austria should be fun. Maria Theresa, the Queen of Austria and the Empress of the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, Austria has a rather unique ability called Diplomatic Marriage. You can spend gold to annex or puppet a city-state that has been your uh, ally for five turns, presumably or more. It's interesting because it's a rather unique way of expanding. You get a fully developed city right off the bat, um, but you have to have maintained an alliance for so long, which means you need to have a stinking ton of money in order to take advantage of this. You need to have a lot of money to gain the alliance in the first place and hold on to it for five turns, and then a lot of money to take the city. So, if you're going to be playing as Austria, and as we will, then you really need to focus on a strong economy and generate a lot of gold. Now, usually I don't seem to have a lot of trouble with that, especially if I take the Commerce Policy set. So, we're going to be trying to make use of that. Um, the Austrians have a unique unit called the Hussar, which replaces the cavalry unit obtained during military science in the Industrial Era. And the Coffee House, a rather interesting replacement for the windmill obtained during economics in the Renaissance era. And we'll see exactly what that does in a little bit. We're going to be playing on a random map type, a small map size with six sieves. Uh, I could play with larger, the thing is, I just know that um, toward the end game, there are so many units to process and so many commands that the game tends to slow down if you have a lot of sieves. So just for simplicity, I tend to do only six players. We'll be playing on Emperor Difficulty as usual on a standard pace. Let's begin the game. Alright, so here we go. Looks like we had an interesting starting location. Um, I see the coast, which is very tempting. see a river that we're not quite located at. We could move if we so desire. I see truffles, which is only one luxury. Not the best start I've ever seen, actually. This is fairly weak as far as things are concerned. Three food resources is nice, but one luxury? I'm really hoping in the fog of war there's uh, more to enjoy here. So now we have a horrible choice to make. Do we decide to start on a coastline, or do we move a tile to get to the mountains? Well, without any indication that the sea tiles will be providing a lot for us, I'm inclined to think that maybe the mountains are the better way to go. So we're going to move our settler two tiles to the south. We will settle along a mountain. Now, why a mountain? Well, the reason for the mountain is that uh, somewhere midway through the game, you unlock the observatory. And the observatory can only be built if your city is directly next to a mountain, but it provides plus 50% science. It's kind of massive, kind of a big deal, and I think it is definitely worth picking up. Tundra, already to the south. This is either a really wonky ma map, or we are very close to the so south pole of this particular rendition of Earth. Huh. All right, well, we will be one turn delayed from settling our city, our capital city. But I think it's worth it. Vienna has been formed. Hey, look at that. Gems. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. Uh, no camps, more truffles. Cows. Good, good. We're going to start building the monument right away. Now, you may be wondering why I'm doing that. Well, I don't think I've done a Civ 5 video since the patch was released either in December of last year or January of this year, but tradition got changed. You can see here, legalism used to be a first-tier policy, and you just pick up landed elite and monarchy from there, and you'd enjoy some really early-game cultural boosts. That's been changed because tradition was way overpowered. Now oligarchy is required before you can get legalism. So, uh, basically, if you plan on going tradition, and I still think it's very powerful, although it is a bit more balanced now, and we will be going with it, um, 
you still need to get a, a monument really early on in the game. It changes your build order just a bit. It used to be that you could go straight for a scout and uh, use legalism to get your free monuments and your culture generation. But now, now if you want to get up to two tiers of um, cultural policies, then you really do need to get the monument ASAP. So that's what we are doing in Vienna. As for science, we'll start off with pottery. It's a pretty standard opening. Shouldn't be a problem for us. Um, really would have liked to have found a ruin by now, but I do see a city-state. Somebody's over here. Excellent! Send me your daughters! I shall marry them all. Valletta. Militaristic. Okay, so if I make them happy with me, they will give me military units. They do have furs. That's good. And because we're the first ones to meet them, we get a little bit of gold. Cool beans. Found the southern coast. There's ice down here, so, and yeah, and snow. So we're definitely really close to the southern pole of this version of Earth. So we're probably going to be expanding to the north more likely than not. But I would like to see what's a little bit over to my west before we commit to anything too early on. One thing I hate about settling next to the snow is that um, you rarely have units down there uh, keeping an eye on the area. So barbarians kind of frequently spawn. And I honestly think that's really silly. I mean, come on. Barbarians spawning in the snow? What is this, Game of Thrones? No. Scout. That's what we'll pick up next. Now that we have our cultural generation, so we're up to three per turn. In five turns, we will unlock our first policy. And we will pick up the tradition tree. It looks like we've already picked up the sheep. The sheeple. That's good. We'd like to pick up those truffles and those gems. Gems are especially nice. You do get three extra gold when worked by a city. So it's one of the more valuable gem um, luxury resources in that sense. I think salt is still the best. But gems are pretty good. And um, since we are going to be going for an economic focus this game, luxury resources that produce lots of gold are going to be very valuable to me. So I'm excited about that. Let's go ahead and pick up Animal Husbandry, reveal the horses on the map. That should be important, I think, seeing as our unique unit will be a mounted unit. Um, I guess we'll send our one unit off to the east and one to the west. I'm not sure what kind of map we're on yet, because it was a random map type. So I don't know if this is continents, I don't know if this is Pangaea, I have no idea. I do know that we found a ruins, though. One more goody hut for me. That's excellent. Scouts, go grab. What do we get? Ooh, culture! I love getting culture. All right, we'll pick up tradition. Of course, because we just adopted tradition, we get an extra three uh, culture in the capital, which means that now we have plus six per turn, which means that in just a couple of turns, we will be able to grab another tenant. Of course, that means we have to pick up oligarchy instead of legalism, but I digress. Hey, Egypt. You have a silly voice and a silly hat. Oh, another city-state, excellent. It's interesting when you play as Austria, because you stop looking at city-states as much of a hindrance to expansion options, as much as, ooh, look, a potential free city. I mean, I guess it's not free by definition. You are paying through the butt to get it, but still, it is it is quite a nice thing to find. So, Kiev and Valletta. Valletta, I imagine, is probably not in a very good position, since it's uh, so close to the South Pole. Kiev may be... I don't know. I'm not sold on either one yet. We'll continue to explore, see what our options are. We've already pretty much explored everything to the west, so we already know where the borders are. We're not too worried about this area. I don't even see any good places to settle down over there. Most likely, we'll want to settle somewhere up here. Take advantage of both the grains, a little bit of extra truffles. It'll be redundant in the sense that we already have truffles, but that's okay. Uh, it means we'll just have to trade with people. I know. I hate trading with people, too, because I'm antisocial like that, but... You gotta do what you gotta do for the sake of your empire. Start working on a worker. Get that early game advantage as best we can. Let's park up on the hill. Found some marble. Lots of jungle. Jungle's good. Cotton as well. Two luxuries next to each other? Oh, if we weren't so far from my capital, I would say that's a really good thing to go for. But we'll, um... We'll see how that plays out. Wow, there are a lot of resources here. Attila the Hun. Wow, are you threatening me? What did I do? How the heck does Egypt and Siam? Alright, Rao Kong Heng. Why does Egypt have a caravan this early in the game? Does that seem like cheating to you? Because it seems like cheating to me! Definitely cheating. 
You are playing on Emperor difficulty though, which basically means that, yes, everything is cheating. <laughs> the AI start with some pretty big advantages that you do not get. No, you can't have an embassy until you've actually scouted me. Or have you actually scouted me already? Where did we meet your guy? Hmm, found lots of barbarians. Hey, Silk! Ooh, Silk and Sugar. Okay, so down here actually would be a pretty decent spot for another city as well. Along the river, some cattle, two luxuries, potentially a good call. I see a city-state, so we're gonna make a beeline for them. Scouts, don't die on me now! Run! Oh wait, that's, that's Siam. So, we'd be settling a bit close to them. Leventa, hi. We'll go ahead and see you. Um, that'll actually get us a little bit of extra faith, and since we already have a shrine, that means we should be able to found a pantheon next turn. What kind of pantheon would I want, though? That's the real question. Not really sure. Hmm. Well, we'll have to think about that. Um, continue to explore. This is a very prime location. Good God. Parker City right here. Or here, but probably right here. Pick up cotton. Double cotton. Marble's pretty close. Stone, sheep, truffles. I mean, and a mountain. Yeah, prime location right there. Very tempting. Uh, Pantheon, Pantheon, Pantheon. What should we do with you? Choose research first. We'll go ahead and grab archery, I think, so we can get some early military units. Somebody... Oh, wait. I don't get a Pantheon. Somebody just picked up uh, protection from range of some sort. Range defense. Oh, we have dyes. That's good to know. Let's let our scout heal for a little bit. Pop over on this hill. We found Egypt. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, we'll start working on some farms to get a little food production. We'll pick up legalism. Now, you may say, what's the advantage of legalism? You already built a monument. Yes, and the monument you have does not become free just because you pick up legalism. It does mean, though, that the next time we unlock a technology that gives us a science building, which will be drama and poetry, we will get a free amphitheater. So, it's not quite as good in the early game. It doesn't give you kind of a snowballing bonus, but it is still quite good. We'll pick up a granary next, I think. Uh, there's our Pantheon. Um, start working our way this direction. So what could we take advantage of here? Nothing really jumps out at me here. No, 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 no. Fertility rights is okay. No, not a lot of pastures. No, no, maybe. No wine or incense. Definitely not goddess of love. Maybe camps? Truffles do require camps. I could get food, food, food. So three food from goddess of the hunt in my capital city. Plus whatever we do if we decide to pick up truffles, but that's just one. And that's probably not good enough. No, mm, probably not. No plantations to be had. No. No, 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 and Tears of the Gods plus two faith. I'm thinking God King makes the most sense. Get one of every resource early on in the game. Ramsey, you want to attack him already? No, I have no interest in that. I don't even know where you are, Attila. I don't even know where you're located. I'm not going to war against Egypt. Are you nuts? Look how weak I am. I'm Austria. Don't touch me. Don't talk to me. All right. Um. Hmm. Still thinking that is one heck of a spot. Yeah. Nope. I don't like to give away my map presence too early on. Uluru. Plus two food and plus six faith. Wow. It's a pretty nice find. Don't think we're going to get to take advantage of that at all, but uh, it's still a nice find. Sydney. Another city-state for us. This time Australia. Hmm. Stone circles from quarries. That's not so bad. It'd be nice if we had some stone, but we don't. I'm going to start heading back with my military units because I think that's going to be worthwhile. Let's grab writing next. Um, still haven't grabbed the gems yet, so there's no point in going for that luxury resource. We'll just continue doing some farms. Sydney desires culture. Well, I am generating plus seven per turn, which is better than most civs will be able to do, thanks to my rush for legalism, so... Uh, we should... We, we, may, we may win that one. We might. We might not. I don't know. Hard to say. 
Laventa wants us to kill the Barbars. Not thinking that's going to happen. Let's start building an archer for a little early game defense, because that could be important. No, no embassies. Not yet. Uh, looks like my warrior is under attack, so we'll just scooch on out of there. A declaration of friendship? No. And the reason I'm saying no is because I know Attila the Hun is interested in some early game aggression. And if I'm not actually going to be making use of Ramesses as a friend, then I don't want to risk upsetting the Huns. So, seems like a no-brainer to me. Kiev targets a nearby encampment. This one in particular, you say. Hmm. Ooh, a ruin! Well, we want to grab that now. All right. I think we will have to brave the fires of the Barbarian Horde. Ooh, another ruin. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Unfortunately, they are both located directly next to Barbarian Villages, but we'll try to make use of that. Uh, grab, and we get a free population. Run! There we go. I'm going to send my archer up in this direction. If we can kill this Barbarian camp... There we go. We got a map. That's actually completely worthless to me, but... Oh well, uh, heal, and let's start building a... In three turns, I would consider building a settler. I'm gonna start working on another archer, I think. Well, let's see, hang on. Anyone want a trade route? Anyone nearby? No. If Kiev or Valletta had asked for a trade route, I would have considered building a caravan, but that's not what they asked for, so no. We're not gonna do that. Uh, my poor scout is taking a beating, apparently. Let's see. Go ahead and build another farm, I guess. Yes, I see the sheep over there. It's not a high priority right now. Food is more important. Let's start working on... Do we want to reveal iron? Yes, we do. Because... It'll take a little while. Ah, yeah. We'll just reveal iron. It'll give me a better idea of where to settle my next city. We'll All accept done. some embassies, I guess. There you are. Now we know. Attila's court. Not a fan of the Huns. Played against them before, you may recall. Don't like them. Uh, do we want to be friends with our neighbor? Yes. Let us work together with our neighbor. Prevent some early game aggression. Uh, although he usually is pretty weak. I could have considered going and killing him, but... Um... No, we'll be friends. We'll be friends. I'm going to pick up Landed Elite, because that extra food is quite nice. And next turn, once we have our Archer, we will start working on uh, a Settler and pick up our second city. Hmm. We can probably... No, he's on the hills. I don't want to do too much... I don't want to attack these Barbarians quite yet, just because he has the early game advantage, and I don't. Let's park in the woods. We have another Archer. We'll just sit back here. Um... We found a second city for Attila. Prera. Uh, pr pr Prea? Prea. I don't know what it is. Library. Great library is never an option, really. We'll start working on the settler because that's what I said I was going to do and it still stands. Uh, until we get to a higher population, I don't think getting a library is all that important. The library gives you plus one science for every two citizens. So if we build it, we would get two science. That is a 20% increase right now. Or 25% increase. But... I think getting the extra settler is going to end up being a bit more advantageous for me. I'm thinking over here is actually a really good settling location. Truffle, truffle, silk, silk, silk. Food, food, river. Horses, yes. Over here is probably a really good location. So the fact that I'm going to be killing off these barbarians actually suits double purpose. Not only will I get some influence with Sydney, but I will be clearing out a good city location. Belgrad, hi. Let's go ahead and attack these barbarians. Somebody entered the classical era already. Yes, we'll accept an embassy from you. Continue just auto-explore for a little bit. Kill the barbarians. There we go. And, whoa, looks like you spawned someone else. All right, well, I have the high ground this time. Please don't mess with me. Yes, this is definitely a prime selling location. We'll be taking we'll be taking use of that next time. I'm just going to leave my military units parked here, make sure nobody gets too close. Kiev, I'm sorry, you're the one who wanted me to clear this out. That's actually okay with me. Your culture, the fact that we're friends will get me a little extra culture per turn. I think that's a worthwhile investment. Next turn, and then we'll call this video here. 
bronze working, iron. There's even iron relatively close by. Yes, that just means this is a no-brainer. I have, I have to do this. I have to do this. Um, go ahead and grab some luxury resources for me. That barbarian is probably going to get killed in the next turn by Siam. Valetta wants gold. I don't have gold to give you. I apologize. We'll start working on the wheel and call it here. All right. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Provis with Civ 5 Brave New World Austria. If you're enjoying this video and you're looking forward to the rest of the series, be sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future content. And I will see you guys next time.